Hey y'all, it's Megan. Welcome back to the channel. Glad y'all are here today. So they're calling for this Arctic blast to be coming through the United States. Uh, I think across most of the country, even down into parts of Florida. So it's about to get real cold for several, several days here. So in that event, I gotta get my tail out here and get my stuff picked because cabbage heads will freeze and bust and just being that cold for that long, um, even these cold crops may not hold up. So we got several things to do to prepare for the cold. So y'all just come spend the day with us. And now I'm gonna go ahead and apologize ahead of time for the wind noise. The wind is blowing like crazy today. So I know there will be a lot of wind noise in the video and ain't much I can do about it, but sorry y'all. Throw them leaves to the chickens or the cows on. Yeah. Uh -oh. That was right nice in there. Yeah, this is pretty decent. First harvest of 2024. That's right. I didn't even <laughs> think about it like that. Yep. <laughs> Planted in 23, harvested in 24. Yep. It may have done pros. I bet it did. It smells like them. Is that right? It don't smell good. I'm going to strip a few leaves off and see. Does it hurt anything to strip those out on the outside of the ball? No. You can look and see. If it's all right on the inside, I can just go ahead and cook that one. Yeah. That done pros. Yeah, it's got ice on the inside. Does it? Yeah. Now, reckon why that improves. And the rest of these. Maybe days. it's exposure over here on this side or something. I don't know. That's a little bitty one, man. That ain't hardly worth taking. Boy, that is a little <laughs> Just leave it like that. That's better than nothing. Yeah. It'll be some good eating onions. Yeah. I had a good hold on the ground. Worms got in it. Worms. Yeah. So y'all, these onions here were pretty much sort of an experiment anyways. I don't think so. I think they were just more or less spring onions. Like onions or whatever you call them. I don't even know the variety that they were. Um, we just found some onion sets. Matter of fact, I found some onion sets on Amazon. I ordered them and planted them in August. And uh, they done fair. I don't think that dry spell we had back in the early fall helped them any. But um, they did do, do fair. Matter of fact, we probably should have done pulled them before now. Yeah. Well, it just is what it is. Yeah, I'm right there probably ain't no good. Well, bite size. Um, I guess I'll take this in the house. Unload my stuff and then I come back out here more. Take some greens or something. You know, if we really wanted to, we've got some. What do you call it? Freeze cloth or that cloth yeah. like you put over plants. We, you we know, could probably make a little bit of a like a tunnel or something and throw over that. But we ain't well, going to. We ain't going to. <laughs> I'm just going to tell you right now. For the next week, the wind is supposed to be bad. It's going to be really, really cold out here. I don't see that uh, freeze protection helping much. I mean, it might save them. And it's going to be cold out here. It's going to be down in the... I think we got single digits at nighttime coming. I'll at least get some of the bigger leaves. We have found... I can't remember the name of these collars, but it was some that was in those survival seeds. They are a little more cold tolerant than the rest of this stuff.
but the rest of this stuff actually got bit back back in december we had a night or two that got down in the 20s and these plants were still fairly small not small small but fairly small and it it bit back every one of these right here and that's why they look look a little funky Sad. <laughs> then we ain't never had no luck with red cabbage i don't know, we know why we try we try every year <laughs> we try every year even in the springtime it just never does anything for us one of these days yeah we'll keep trying because we just couldn't grow cabbage heads either so. yeah we've finally been able to grow a cabbage head this past year different but it decided it liked us i guess i guess we ain't never grown no spinach have we uh -uh. that's the first plant we've ever grew yeah it did pretty good too mm -hmm. it started off bad but boy after we transplanted it it took off it's the only one that lives look at there we got some chickweed coming up in behind there all right, you can eat that too. There. Grab some with it. You can eat chickweed just like any other grain. I heard us talk about in other videos, my, our freezer space is precious. So, Very like, limited right now too. Yeah, and so between the hogs and having the cow butchered in what, July, August, like our, our freezer is full and the chickens. So um, I'm not gonna be freezing any of this. I have some canned, but I actually canned the uh, last year. So that's what I'm gonna do with this. So that's why I'm not, I, you want, I ain't gonna pick off. <laughs> and you know, chances are if it warms up during the day, which is not supposed to get too warm, but it is supposed to get above freezing each day, it that okay. this may be okay anyways. It may bite, bite it back some. But last but, year, I didn't think it would kill it last year. And it oh, killed it, it, dead. it killed it dead last year. <laughs> You know, we can, we had it killed last year, but those both of those two or three days there, it never got above freezing. Uh, even during the hottest, you know, the middle of the day, it was still below freezing. Um, so I think that had a lot to do with it. Then we had one year, remember it snowed and laid on top of it. And when the when the snow melted, it was gone. If we'd, uh, if we'd have come and cleaned the snow off of it when the snow was powdery, it would yeah, it like thawed and froze and thawed and froze yeah. and turned into a big sheet of ice laid on top of it. Yeah. Then once the once the snow thawed out completely, it was it was done. But again, any of y'all that have watched any of my previous gardening videos, that salad patch was down across the creek. So it's a lot it colder like, down there too. Well, yeah, and that was something we didn't pay a lot of attention to because we don't go down there a lot. That's right. And so. You know, we didn't make a special trip down there to go check on the salad patch. And now we have things that need to be checked on at the house. Yep. <laughs> so we can see. <laughs> That's one thing that we've really made prioritized, I guess you'd say, in the last couple years is the crops that constantly need checking on or constantly need picking are all up here close to the house. I guess I'll just kill up here and then I guess I'll call it quits on the drink. All right. Like now, I said, the thing is, I mean, this right here won't be, but like maybe three meals because it cooks down so much. I mean, it looks like I got a lot, but it ain't really. Yeah, it ain't much. It ain't that much, yeah. <laughs> so this bed right here is all kale. Every bit of that is. Take some of it too. So y'all might have just heard us say the term salad patch. If you're new to our channel and hadn't heard that term yet, that's what people here in this area will typically call a patch of greens. So it would be like turnips, turnip greens. Uh, you'd have your white top turnips, your purple turnips. Um, then you'd have your all top turnips and uh, mustard greens and some kale and all stuff like that just mixed together. And you throw it out in your garden and it sort of acts like a cover crop as well. But that's what we've always called a salad patch. I just thought about that. I was like, we got a lot of new people here and they just heard us say salad patch. They may not know what we're talking about. Kind of one of those made up terms. I, I think it's one of those regional terms, really. What you got? Collard, kale, and mustard. Thank you, baby. So this right here, this is Jacob's raised bed, and this mustard was his cover crop. Yep. 
we sowed a, co a different cover crop in this earlier and then uh, we kind of terminated it and went back and put some curly leaf mustard on top of it. It's done really good too. I believe it's about time to go in and eat some lunch. Got fresh barbecue. Fresh barbecue. Oh boy. Keep our fingers crossed and just can lay it down before we go to put flashes around our chickens down here. And our maple coops to protect them from the cold and the wind because chickens will do all right in the cold. It's the wind, the wind can hurt them. So we put plastic around there. Yes, it is. It is. Jacob, let's me and you go in here and throw this into the chicken. Okay. Oh, yeah, it's been a while since y'all had something green. Eh? All right, we got lunch eat, and now we gotta get our chickens ready for this cold snap. Chickens are pretty hardy when it comes to cold weather. Um, they're not as fragile as a lot of people make them out to be. But like I said earlier, I do worry about the cold wind coming through these windows here. Luckily, their roosting poles are in this area, so that doesn't bother me too bad, but that'll at least keep the wind from flying through there and them getting too cold, so. They all look pretty happy and healthy. Uh, most of the ones that have molted got their feathers back for the most part. So well, they do look better. Yeah, and we're getting more eggs. Yeah, I've noticed that. Um, well, to hold this plastic up, we use these type of nails here. It's got that plastic washer on them. Those are made for uh, uh, your tar paper and stuff that goes under your, the roofing of your house. But it also works good for nailing up plastic um because if you just put a regular nail up there just a small nail head it'll rip right through that plastic in no time and by springtime this will probably be halfway ripped off too from, from the all wind. the wind and everything yeah. else but if it gets too bad we fix it if it's later in the year we just go ahead and finish you know rip it all off and we're done with it And so y'all, yet again, you've heard me talk about in other chicken videos that I wish they had a more permanent structure for the winter time. That would also make it easier to prepare them for the cold, don't you think? Do what? If we had a more permanent, like to keep them Absolutely. in the winter time. Absolutely. So that's our, you know, another downfall to the way we do this here. And I had a lot of comments on one of the previous videos when we were moving the chickens about you know, just letting them free range. The reason we do this, uh, the main, I'll tell you the main reason for us anyway, is this fertilizes our pasture without us having to spend money on chemical fertilizer to make our grass grow. And it, do, it does help, uh, especially if we move them like we're supposed to, yeah. which don't always happen. <laughs> when you leave them long enough that they- uh, Kill the grass and they stuff. All burn, they burn up a spot underneath. <laughs> doesn't help immediately but you take about six months after you've moved them away from that area you've got the biggest prettiest flush lush green grass you've ever saw and if they just free ranged we wouldn't have no chickens left yeah. i mean that's just the plain and simple fact of it i mean we've got neighbors all around who something gets fr them. free range their chickens and it's constantly like hey y'all got a fox out there something got my chickens like you know knock on wood i mean knock on wood yeah knock happen. on wood I better knock on wood because, yeah. but you know, just right over the hill here, there, the guy over there, he'll turn his chickens out, and every time he turns them out, something get them during the day. Get one of them. At least. Yeah, like one a day. Um, so this electric netting still allows them to somewhat free range and get exposed to new ground while keeping them protected as well, and keeping the chickens in. And fertilizing our pasture. And fertilizing our pasture. <laughs> so, if nothing else, I think, I'm not a, I, I really ain't a big fan of the electric net like a lot of people are. But that is one good thing about it is it's almost, unless it's an aerial predator that comes in to attack your chickens, nothing generally ever messes with this stuff as long as you've got power on it. Now, if you get to the point where you're slacking on power, well, you know, they go after 10 and they figure it out and a coon will raise up that net he can climb under the net and you know it can be bad stand in the corner or something maybe it'll blow away
Just walk over there and see if I got it. You can walk around the fence. How many did you get? I saw one I didn't cut up. And that grown four. It grown four? Yes. <laughs> I know how many eggs I got. Oh, you got them in them pockets too? Mm-hmm. A hundred in this pocket. You better be careful. That's why they tell me how we get down. <laughs> Got it done. Half of them are piled in here. I guess trying to figure out what in the world we were doing to their house. But this door stays closed, so that won't be a draft coming in. And anywhere besides their door that they go out is uh is covered. They roost. Most of them actually roost on the upper part, so they should be okay. Um. And even though our floors are slatted like this, this is never posed to be a problem. If you're standing in here when the wind's blowing, um, it doesn't really come up through this floor, believe it or not. So this should keep them decently warm. They use their own body heat plus each other's body heat to stay warm too. We just want to protect them from the draft. My pretty boy. And so this is what the outside looks like. Yeah, it's not the prettiest thing ever. Yeah. Main thing with plastic like this though is you want to keep keep it pinned down to whatever you got attached to the best you can because if it gets like I if there's no board running across right here, so I can't nail this down. But had there been a board there, I'd really wish I could have nailed that down because any bit of flapping in the wind you get will eventually cause the plastic to tear and then that'll be something you've got to fix but we've got it pinned down pretty good so i think it i think it'll hold up pretty well yeah it just needs service purpose for what a couple months yeah right well through the rest of this month and most of february yeah but um it's probably not totally necessary to do but i guess the, the happier your chickens are potentially the more eggs you'll get from them throughout the winter so you know and i guess it gives you that extra peace of mind knowing that you've got the wind blocked off from them but we have noticed our chickens are a lot more fluffy this winter i don't know if they're preparing for a really cold winter or what but they're just fluffy looking a lot more than normal while everything's sort of thawed out it's We'll go ahead and fill up these waters and then I'm just gonna run that water hose down the hill and uh, let it be draining. But them waters, once they're filled up, they'll last for several days. Somebody's probably gonna ask us how we keep these things from freezing. And the honest truth is we don't. <laughs> but um, best thing I can tell you is like right now where our location of this thing is, it's a really sunny spot. Like as soon as the sun comes up, it's hitting this spot and it stays here till the sun goes down. And in the past, we've had pretty good luck with them sort of halfway thawing out during the middle of the day. You just may have to come beat them yeah, over the ground. Uh, if it gets if it gets cold and stays cold for a really long time, you may have to come out here and do some working with them, pour some hot water or something like that. But typically they end up thawing themselves pretty good. We're having steaks and homemade fries tonight, so coming down here to my potato place and getting me some of the bigger ones. And I'm going, I want to help her make the fries. You going to help me make the fries? 
So they're down here in this old horse stable. If you missed that video of how we store our potatoes, this year we insulated them under all this straw in hopes that they're not gonna freeze. Some eyes on them now. There's a good one. Hey, Tiger. Hold that one. They're starting to grow some eyes, but they're not shriveled at all. Where the ones in the house are already shriveling, so. Yeah, they're still look pretty good. Yeah. I just put water into the calf. I want to show you something else for the water hose. Um, I've done took the water hose out and drug it down the hill. So if you've got one of these uh, splitters on the water hose, you don't even have to unhook it if you don't have a hose on the other end just open up the valve did you hear that and you can hear it unsuck and open up all the valves that's on it let the water drain out and that right there will allow that vacuum to drain the water on out the other end of the hose and so this won't freeze and then this is a frost free hydrant so as long as they're turned off they don't freeze anyways the way that i keep cabbage is just gonna wrap it in a little bit of and I'm gonna just put it in my refrigerator. I'm not gonna wash it or anything. Got a little water coming out of it. And I'm just gonna wrap that up. If I was planning on keeping this for an even longer term in the refrigerator, I'd probably do a few layers of tin full. But I don't plan on keeping this in there too terribly long, so we'll just do do just this one two layers here and i'm gonna put it just like that that's one of them little ones but i'm gonna do it just like that in my fridge i have tried storing cabbage in my root cellar um it must not get quite cold enough down there or either it's too damp i'm not sure but um it didn't keep very well it kind of dried it dried the cabbage out like completely so I'm gonna wrap this, these leaves tight. And I may just save this one. I may cook this one tonight. And then that'll just be my two little ones left. I'm the only one that eats cabbage anyway, so to make me a tiny little pot of cabbage there. The onions, I'm going to cut the green parts off uh, and just put them in a plastic bag in my fridge. And then I told y'all earlier what I was going to do with the greens. I'll also just bag them up, keep them in the fridge and eat on them for the next week or two. Um, and hope that the cold doesn't get them too bad outside. But anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Hope you learned a little something. Glad y'all spent the day with us. And y'all be sure to stay warm out there. And... Anyways, till we see you on the next one, y'all have a good one.